Today we're going to explore the topic of cell transport, specifically the cell membrane. Structure and function, uh, what, is, what is it made of, um, and how does that impact what it does. To start things off, two warm-up questions. Number one, why do all cells have a cell membrane? And number two, what is homeostasis? Give you a couple seconds to think about those two. All right, so for question one, why do all cells have a cell membrane? Think about the function. The cell membrane is one of our big four that all cells have. Cell membrane, cytoplasm, ribosomes, genetic information like DNA. So the cell membrane is the outside barrier of the cells, unless they do have a cell wall. But the cell membrane offers protection, it provides shape, and it really controls what enters or leaves the cell. Homeostasis we haven't talked about since unit one. Our big example of homeostasis was temperature. We have an internal temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and our body wants to maintain that stability at all times. So we have different mechanisms that are in play when the temperature goes up or goes down. You know, we shiver, we sweat, you know, our blood vessels become dilated or constrict based off of how much heat loss or heat conservation we want. So back to the cell membrane function. Once again, it is part of every single cell. It separates the inside from the outside because it is a barrier. And since it is a barrier, it kind of controls what enters or leaves. One of the big words when it comes to cell membrane is selectively permeable. What that simply means is some things can, can cross the cell membrane while other things can't. If you look at the top right-hand corner, we see this picture that shows water is going through pretty easily on both sides. But the sugar molecules are too big to fit through those circles, so all of the sugar molecules are relegated to one side because they can't go through. That would be an example of selectively permeable. Some things can get through, other things cannot. Going back to unit two, the cell membrane is made up of lipids, specifically two layers of lipids, which is why it's also called the lipid bilayer. The specific lipid that makes it up is called the phospholipid, which is made up of a polar head, polar, which means it'll be hydrophilic, it is fine with interacting with water, and two nonpolar tails. And nonpolar, it's going to be hydrophobic. It wants nothing to do with water. Since we have that difference in polarity, the two-layer structure is going, to, is going to be what works best to keep things in and keep things out. So having the polar heads facing outward as well as inward so water can come up to the barriers on both sides of the cell membrane. And then the... Nonpolar tails face inward, kind of creating that barrier. So polar on the outside and inside, nonpolar in between. So once again with our phospholipid, our hydrophilic polar heads, hydrophobic nonpolar tails. The effectiveness of being semi-permeable would not work if there was simply one layer. Having two layers where they're pointed in opposite directions creates the ability for water to come up to the cell membrane, both outside the cell as well as inside the cell, especially considering that we are mostly made up of water. In labeling your packet, Hydrophilic and polar, where the heads are, hydrophobic and nonpolar, where the tails are. So this picture is shown 
on page 11 in the bottom left hand corner. So make sure we have it labeled correctly. Now final couple things. Uh, it is called the fluid mosaic model. We kind of got into that a little bit today. Um, it is a fluid which means it is not a rigid shape. It kind of moves back and forth depending on kind of what is affecting it. You know, we've used um, waterbed as an example. You know, if you have a water balloon that isn't completely filled, you can really kind of move the water around um, the balloon pretty easily. It just, everything responds kind of in unison. And we also call it a mosaic. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, mosaic art where they use little pieces of glass uh, or stone to kind of create a picture. Or, you know, for those that have a background in art, pointillism, um, just using like kind of the tips of a marker or a paintbrush uh, to really develop a picture that's just made of dots. So as you can see, all the polar heads, the little pieces that kind of make up just the mosaic, the big picture. We have three kind of major parts to the cell membrane outside of the phospholipids. You have cholesterol. Cholesterol is not just something that you got to watch out for in blood, but cholesterol is almost like the anchor in the cell membrane. Since it is a fluid, it kind of keeps everything together. You have proteins. Proteins are going to aid in cell identification if they need to work together. Transport, you see that some of the proteins span the entire length of the cell membrane. So they allow things that would otherwise be rejected by the cell membrane, kind of giving it pass through. And then cell signaling. These little antennas are actually carbohydrates that will signal when different things are needed or when cells are working together to form tissues and um, things that we have. And then there's antennas, carbohydrates, you know, IDing the correct cell. Finally, we're going to end off with just a video just kind of showing you the fluid mosaic model and kind of how it's almost like water, but it's really not, just how that barrier kind of flows. Deanery of the inner cell and the harsh conditions of the outside world stands the cell's plasma membrane. As crucial as this barrier is, it's surprisingly flexible. Push it and watch it move. Poke hard enough and it might break and begin to regroup. The lipid molecules of the membrane naturally assemble in a double layer because their tails repel water as their heads attract it. Throw in some cholesterol and a few carbohydrates and you have the basic structure of a plasma membrane. Within these lipid molecules, we also find different proteins which do various things for the cell. For instance, they receive signals from the world outside, or they transport nutrients and waste. So nature composes the membrane with a combination or mosaic of different lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins. And these molecules are not stationary. They constantly move within the structure, fluidly changing their positions. The survival of all life rest on this veil of material. A supple membrane, just two molecules thick. All right, that's where we'll stop today. Uh, thanks for watching. Bring any questions that you have tomorrow for class. Thanks.